Welcome to Physics with Mr. Brazil. Um, I made a video on pulley problems, horizontal hanging masses, unconventional solutions. Um, the last one I made, I had some errors, so I'm rebuilding this video, so sorry if anybody followed that. Um, this one is gonna be the correct one, so here we go. First of all, what's unconventional is instead of breaking this up into, it's still component vectors, but I'm gonna take the cord and make it the x-axis by stretching it out. Let me see, let me show you what I mean. So looking at the drawing over here on the left, I'm going to take the coordinate plane, I'm going to put x in line with the cord, and so as it goes around the pulley, notice that the x direction is the cord direction, okay? So my y is still the vertical, okay? But the cord is being stretched out. So if you look over here, what's going to happen is, well, this is a frictionless, so the 7 kilogram isn't going to be putting a tug on the cord, but there is a tension on the left side of the pulley, so I'm going to put tension right here, and it's going to be a positive tension because it's pulling to the right, so this is a positive, and I'm going to kind of put the pulley like here, and so there's the tension pulling upward, which is more to the left because I'm stretching out the cord, so this is now a negative tension. Now we have a hanging mass that's pulling, the 12 kilograms, okay? So that is going to be a positive direction, and I'm calling it FG12, and this whole system is moving to the right, because the 12 kilogram mass is going to be greater, so this is going to be an M total A, okay? And let's write that as total. All right, so let's set up the net force in the x direction, meaning we're using the cord as our x-axis. So let's sum that up. So the net force in the x direction is going to be a positive T minus a negative T, that's the tension, so those cancel out. We have a positive, and I'm going to call it FG12 from the hanging mass. It's going to be equal to the total mass times the acceleration. So we're looking for the acceleration at first anyway, okay? So let's do that. So A is going to be equal to FG12, sub 12, let's get that to look a little better. I don't know why it's not doing that. Okay, and then divided by our total mass. So that's going to be M12G. Okay, and that'll be M7 plus M12. Let's put some values in, 12 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second. And my pen is not cooperating. Here we go. I have to draw a little larger. 7.0 kilograms plus 12 kilograms. I'm just writing everything out so that you see it. Again, this is a video, so remember you can always slow these down or pause them, okay? Uh, the answer to this will be 6.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so now we know the acceleration. Let's put a box around that so that we know that uh, that is our answer. So how do we tackle... Um, the tension, okay, well I tell my students for this unconventional method, we just cut the pulley in half, okay, if you're looking at the le left, cut the pulley in half, and now let's write our net forces for the y direction. So the net force for the y, and again, we're now changing the pulley, maybe I should do this, here. I got a tension upward, T, I have the box, let's just put a dot, and FG12, and now this whole system is going downward, so this is going to be an M12A 
minus going downward. This whole system is moving downward. I cut the pulley, I'm just looking at the hanging mass and the tension there. So in this case, the coordinate plane, you know, let's just put it in a color here that you can understand. It's going to go, here's our x-axis and our y is the vertical, okay? Pretty, that's similar to conventional thinking. So what's going to happen is we've got a positive tension upward, negative Fg12 equal to M12, but this is going to be a minus because it's going, the, this net force is going downward, A. Okay, to solve for the tension, T equals, and I'm going to change Fg to M. 12g minus m12a. Let's make this look slick. m12. Let's factor it out. g minus a. And let's put our values in. So 12 kilograms, 9.80 meters per second squared, minus our 6.2 meters per second squared is equal to um, 43 newtons. And that's our force with a uh, surface that's frictionless. Let's take this concept now and put it to a situation where we have friction. So, let's flip this over and here we go. We have now a coefficient of friction that is 0.12, if you can look at the sentence above. Okay? And we're going to do everything the same. The same unconventional method of uh, looking at the chord as the x-axis. So I'm going to put my coordinate plane, x and y. If you do use this with the AP, I probably would recommend that you show this coordinate plane going in this direction so that they understand that the chord is the x-axis. Um, it works well. I will do a video on the conventional method and you'll see that the answers are the same. They don't change. Okay. Now, we're going to be accounting for friction this time, so let's do it. So now we're going to have a tug to the left due to friction. Okay. So I'm going to put a little dot there. So F friction, and that's the 7 kilograms. And now we have a tension going this way to the right. So that's going to be positive. Our friction will be negative. At the pulley, we have the other tug. So that's going to be the minus T because it's push. I know it's pushing upward, but we're stretching the cord. So it's going to go to the left. So it's a negative. And then our mass, we're going to have an FG12. And that's going to be positive because it's tugging to the right. And this whole system is now moving uh, rightward. So it's going to be M total positive A. Okay, so it's very similar to the other situation. The only thing is now we're accounting for friction. Since we have friction, let's go look below the drawing here. So here's the deal. The sum of forces for the, in the y direction for mass 7 is going to be F normal minus Fg7 equals, okay, 0. Because it's not moving upward or downward, there's no acceleration on that mass in the y direction. Okay, with that in mind, we now know that F normal is going to be equal to M7G. And you should, you have to remember this, friction is equal to the coefficient of friction mu Fn. Okay, this is not, this is not something that you don't remember. This is, I don't care whether you're in a regular physics class, honors, college, you, this is something to put in memory. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be mu M7G. Okay, all right, let's start putting these pieces together. Okay, and the net force 
in the x direction along the cord, we're going to have a minus force of friction due to this mass. That's 7. We have a positive T, my, and I'm only writing the T's for the sake of having you visualize this. So positive T minus a T, and we have a positive Fg12 equal the total mass, okay, of both times A. A will be equal to the force of friction, 7 minus Fg12 over the total mass. Doesn't look too tough, huh? It just takes a little bit of practice to do this method. It was one of my student teachers who uh, actually used this. I was using the unconventional method, but hey, um, students seem to like this because there's less substitution. They just like the idea of cutting the pulley. So I teach it. It works. So we're going to have mu mass 7 g minus mass 12 g over mass 7, oops, mass 7 plus mass 12. Okay, let's put some values in and see what we're going to get. I'm going to factor out g. So minus 0 0.12 times 7.0 kilograms and Oops, and I think I may have made, do I look like I may have made a mistake here? No, this is a plus 12. Ah, see, review your math. Plus, so it's plus M12, plus M12. Okay, so let's put 12 kilograms there. Caught that. And 9.80 meters per second squared. All right, looking good, 7.0 kilograms. Oh, this is not, that is not a zero. That should not be there. Let's get rid of that. Fix it right now instead of worrying about it later. 12, okay, plus 12 kilograms. That gives you some time to look at the math, huh? All right, so when we punch this in the calculator, 5.9 meters per second squared. And that kind of makes sense. We're now fighting friction, so that's a little slower. The other system without friction was 6.2. So we know we're going in the right direction. Okay, so what should happen to the tension? Should the tension increase or decrease? Well, again, we take this just like before. We're gonna just cut the pulley in half. And this time our tension will be T upward. And we're gonna have FG 12 but this whole system is going downward, so again, M12A is going to be a negative, so the net force is going downward. But just by looking at the tension uh, above the 12 kilograms, then the mass of the 12 kilograms being pulled by gravity. So let's do this math and see what we get for tension. So I'm going to write the net force in Y of 12 is equal to T minus Fg12 equals minus M12A. T is going to equal, and I'm going to factor out the, I'm not going to factor out anything right now, so I'll just show you M12G minus M12A. Okay, arrow down, so I'm going to factor out the M12 and G minus A. Plug in some values for you. So 12 kilograms, 9.80 meters per second, squ second squared, minus 5.9 meters per second squared. And that is equal to 47 newtons. 
Let's make that look prettier. Okay, Newtons. Okay, that also makes sense. It should be a little more tension because there's friction, so we have to put a little more force to get the boxes moving. So this is the unconventional method. I hope this works out for you. And keep practicing physics and look out for my conventional method of how the, it's normally taught in textbooks. All right, bye.